Fire extinguishers come in all shapes and sizes, but few are as flexible as this. All it is is a plastic tube designed to fit anywhere where there's a fire risk. Well, Peter's outside, ready to try it out. Peter. Electrical fires in a television or a computer, for instance, are often difficult to deal with. They can start very suddenly, and the last thing that you want to do is to pour water onto live wiring. But this one should be no problem at all. There's the extinguisher, this single tube running across there. Now, if we just add a bit of fire, there we are, well and truly alight, and there goes the extinguisher, and there go the flames. Now, the tubing inside there contains just six grams of extinguishant, and it takes a little because it goes straight to the heart of the fire. As the flames heat the tubing, they weaken it, and because the liquid inside is under pressure, it ruptures the tube at the weakest point, so the extinguishant is released as a gas in exactly the right spot. In fact, the system can predict when a fire is about to happen and react before the temperature gets too high. Now, you can vary the temperature at which the tube goes off simply by adjusting the amount of pressure that there is initially inside with the liquid. Now, clearly, because I'm just using a heat gun, this one's designed to go off at a very low temperature. Just filled it. Oh, there it goes. And that went off at uh, around 90 degrees Celsius. Because you can vary the shape and the critical temperature, these tubes can be used in anything from cable ducts to litter bins. In fact, one has just come back from a gruelling journey across the Sahara Desert in the Paris-Dakar rally. With 60 gallons of petrol on board, this was clearly a very big fire risk, and in an accident, the driver, Dick Partridge, might not have been in a fit condition to operate a manual extinguishing system. But this would put out the fire. The tubes, in fact, run all the way around the vehicle, but the only ones that you can see at the moment are these ones up in the bonnet, and in this case, they've been connected to an additional uh, can of extinguishant down here because in an engine you could expect a big fire. Now, so confident are they that this will put out a fire that we've got an explosive expert here who's going to detonate a small explosive charge to see if it will work. So while I stand back, let's see what happens. There he goes, plenty of flames coming out through the bonnet there, but oh, there goes the extinguisher. You can hear it spitting out its gas and uh, no sign of any flames. I think it's safe to open the bonnet now. No. And right there, you can see quite clearly where the extinguishant is pouring out through the ruptured holes in the pipe there. And as you can also see, the fire itself is well and truly out. Now, it's never happened to me, and I hope to goodness it never does, but the possibility of a fire in a combine harvester in the middle of a tinder-dry field of corn on a hot day is one that horrifies me, as it must anyone who's ever driven one. Indeed, the figures suggest that there have been more serious combine fires in recent years than previously, possibly because most drivers now sit in air-conditioned cabs and can't smell the first whiff of smoke in time to stop the machine and deal with it. Well, a solution may have been found. It's called Fire Trace. It's very simple, and earlier this week I went to a machinery dealer's yard in Grantham to see it demonstrated and to do a bit of out-of-season combine driving. It's the wrong time of year, of course, but let's just pretend that I'm driving this combine through a crop of corn. Suddenly, as I'm driving along, minding my own business, the engine flies on fire. Now there's clearly a danger, not only to this combine, but also to the crop. And what about me? I might get burned as well. But not this time, because this fire is already out. Well, originally it was designed for computers and electronic equipment, but Dick Partridge was going on the Paris-Dakar race, and he asked me if I could do something to protect the engine of his Jeep. Indeed, the pre-race trials of the system were so impressive that David Melton was encouraged to explore other uses for what he'd designed. But how did it actually work? The heat of the fire will cause the tube to burst at the hottest place and deliver the extinguishing gas to the very heart of the fire. It's lineal detection throughout its length that it will only discharge where it's needed. Very effective, that. And I understand from NFU Insurance that they'll be watching the performance of that device through next harvest and they'll make any decision on premium levels on the basis of that experience. 
This video has been produced as a training aid to demonstrate various methods which can be employed to deal with fire incidents within laboratory fume cupboards. Up to now, we've concentrated on the use of portable fire extinguishers, which rely on a competent person being present to operate them, and on the fire being tackled in its early stages. It's not uncommon for work within fume cupboards to be left unattended, except for the monitoring presence of fire detection systems. A fire in this situation, although detected quickly, may develop into a more serious incident with the potential for extensive damage before the emergency services or fire team arrives. This is one of the methods which is being considered for providing continuous fire protection cover to fume cupboards. The system is called fire trace and it consists of a pressurized extinguisher body containing dry powder which can be installed outside the cupboard. Connected to the extinguisher body is the fire trace tubing. This is installed within the fume cupboard and is manufactured from a special plastic which gives it the properties of a heat sensor allowing the tube to rupture on flame or heat impingement with the effect of delivering dry powder directly to the seat of the fire. To test the system we've spilt 300 mils of solvent around a fairly cluttered fume cupboard and ignited it to create a sizable fire. Notice how fast and effective the system is and how the equipment remains undisturbed. The extinguisher operation itself can be linked to local fire alarm activation and trigger service shutdowns. The same system can be used in any electrical wiring installation, either in buildings or behind a car's instrument panel. A localised fire is quickly extinguished. The pressure gauge indicates a discharge has occurred unless an audible alarm or flashing light on the dash is fitted as well. But that's all very well for a relatively small underbonnet fire. What happens in an accident if you're trapped in the car, perhaps unconscious, in a pool of burning petrol? Well, we've got that pool of burning petrol, which my assistant is going to set a match to. This test car is equipped with another cylinder and a line running round the underside of the engine bay. So let's see what happens. The device certainly seems to work very effectively indeed. It'll be available on the aftermarket, but I think it's too important to leave to somebody to decide to fit to their car. It's something all manufacturers should be fitting as standard. But just to show this rather singed Vauxhall Cavalier still works. Well, let me just repeat Chris's warning. Please don't try out those experiments for yourself because, of course, they can be very dangerous. That apparently anonymous car park was at the fire extinguisher factory itself. We had lots of skilled people standing by just out of sight in case something went wrong. A wide range of plant and equipment can be protected using the standard range of fire trace systems. For larger volumes, and a second generation of fire trace modular systems are now available. These incorporate a patented pneumatic control valve connected to a standard trace detection tube which when ruptured will cause the valve to open releasing the canister's contents into distribution pipe work. For the purpose of demonstration the canister has been installed in a small car with four plumb diffusers located under the wheel arches. A short length fire trace tube has been fitted to the rear bumper so that the unit will not operate until the car has been completely engulfed by the fire. The automatic extinguisher system used in this demonstration would be sufficient to protect a room of approximately 40 cubic metres. A hydraulic control valve is also available to activate water fog systems. These valves require only the incoming mains water pressure to operate their on-off control.
Individual extinguisher units can be harnessed together to form a modular system with a ring main of trace detection tube. In this demonstration, the fire trace detection line has been located well away from any direct heat to allow time for the fire to become established before the system operates. These four 9 kg dry powder extinguisher units would be sufficient to protect a room of approximately 100 cubic metres. The entire system is intrinsically safe, operating without electrical connections. It is therefore ideal for use in chemical stores or other areas where flammable wafers may be present. In this slow motion sequence, you will see all the extinguisher modules operate simultaneously. This feature could prove useful when protecting moving machinery or conveyor belts. Following the success of the fire trace modular systems, we have developed a similar valve capable of handling the high pressure of CO2 or nitrogen. A regulator incorporated within the valve assembly reduces the cylinder pressure to approximately 12 bar compatible with the standard trace detection tube. Extinguishant gas is discharged via diffuser nozzles interconnected by high pressure steel tubing. As the trace detection tube is maintained at a low pressure, it can be interfaced with our standard range of alarm and plant shutdown equipment. A 0.75 cubic meter cabinet has been constructed to simulate a rotating machine protected by a 3 kg CO2 fire trace system. A mixture of petrol and diesel oil has been used to create a realistic fire. As carbon dioxide is a clean extinguishing agent, it leaves no residue so production can be resumed with minimal delay. For larger installations, these valves can be used in cylinders of up to 45 kilograms capacity and if necessary, several cylinders can be interconnected. Some of the most fascinating things are here in the inventor's area. Take this, it's the Paro plug, designed to put out fires in the kind of electrical equipment you might have at home. What gave rise to it first appeared on our program seven years ago. Craig Doyle has been back to meet the inventor to see what's happened since. The inventor is Dave Melton, a firefighting fanatic from Ipswich. How does it work? Well, the heat of the fire causes the walls of the tube to weaken and burst at the hottest place, delivering the extinguishing gas to the very heart of the fire. Now, that was seven years ago that we featured that. Has it been successful for you? Oh, it's been great. Um, we're now fitting these systems to vehicles, computers, all types of equipment worldwide. What have you got for us now? Well, we've moved on to a miniature system that will fit inside a television set. Here we've got the Pyroplug. This is designed to put out fires in televisions and computers. It not only detects and extinguishes the fire, but it turns off the main supply as well to prevent reignition. All so right. it does three jobs. Detection, extinguishing, isolation, game, set and match. One of Dave's tubes full of extinguishing runs through the television and is connected to his pyro plug. The TV is then plugged into the same device, which will turn everything off at the first sign of fire. Well, the switch is controlled by a magnet in a piston held in place by the pressure in the tube. As soon as the tube bursts, the magnet moves away, breaking the circuit. All right, so the fire's put out, electricity off straight away. Yeah. That's correct. And all you need to do now is set fire to the television. <laughs> That's a, I'll let you do that, Dave. I'll get out of the way. <laughs> Brilliant. That gives you a bit of a shock, that, doesn't it? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Still doing it. So the fire's out. Television off. What do you expect? It's brilliant, Dave. It's brilliant. Well, there you go. You've seen it on Tomorrow's World. It works. Fire out. Television safe. Pretty good. To further evaluate the fire trace system, Glaxo Welcome Corporation has kindly donated this redundant fume cabinet. A short length of trace detection tube has been fitted inside. 
This cabinet has been equipped with a Firetrace 4 kg powder system. 300 grams of petrol have been spilled to create a realistic fire. This fire has been detected within 12 seconds and extinguished almost immediately. Some of the powder is drawn through the extract system, preventing fire spread to other areas. A similar fire is extinguished within three seconds using carbon dioxide. As CO2 is a clean extinguishing agent, it leaves no residue. This is from before, the right-hand diffuser is a finer spray. I'm impressed already. Although slower to react, AFFF foam will prevent reignition. The extinguishing gas used in these demonstrations is manufactured by the 3M's company. Clean extinguishing agents, or CEAs, are totally fluorinated organic compounds designed to replace halons in both fixed and portable systems. These products are an excellent choice for protecting sensitive mechanical and electronic equipment against fire because they are both clean and non-conductive. 3M proprietary perfluorocarbon compounds, such as 3M clean extinguishing agents, are highly compatible with most materials of construction and have been used by the electronics industry for over 30 years for assembly, heat transfer, and reliability testing of sensitive electronic components. To demonstrate many of the attributes of perfluorocarbons, an operating television set is submerged in a 3M perfluorocarbon fluid. The television does not short out and does not transfer an electrical shock through the fluid to the person's hand. Perfluorocarbons are not reactive and are often referred to as inert fluids. They are odorless, colorless, and exhibit low toxicity. <laughs>